They're small and very bright, and they have the potential to lower our energy consumption considerably. Light-emitting diodes, or LEDs. Osram Semiconductor subsidiary Osram Opto Semiconductors develops and produces components that make new, energy-efficient and worldwide lighting solutions possible. Modern high-performance LEDs are produced in clean rooms. The heart of the LED, the chip, is set up by various semiconductor layers, including the light-emitting PN junction. As voltage is applied to the diode, current flows. Negatively charged electrons move in one direction of the electrical field. Positively charged holes move in the opposite direction. Where electrons and holes meet, energy is released as photons, the elementary particles of light. By choosing suitable semiconductor materials, LEDs can be produced which emit colored light like blue, green, red, yellow and orange, or even invisible light. Osram Opto Semiconductor's LED chips are made in Regensburg, in one of the world's most advanced chip production facilities. They are produced in clean rooms with processes that were originally developed to produce semiconductor chips for silicon technology. Individual process steps are mostly automated. The source materials are monocrystalline substrates, such as wafers made of synthetically grown aluminium oxide. Under controlled conditions, the layered structures required for light-emitting diodes are deposited on these substrate wafers. This takes place in epitaxy reactors. The substrates are heated and gaseous substances enter the reaction chamber. They are decomposed and react on the wafer's hot surface, forming, for example, negatively and positively doped gallium arsenide layers. In this way, the light-emitting PN junctions are produced. The substrate with the PN transition is now completely deposited with a thin metal layer. This is done in a high vacuum evaporation tool. An electron beam vaporizes metal in the high vacuum chamber. The metal atoms are deposited on the substrate with the PN transition. In this way, a continuous conducting metal layer is formed. The metallized layers now have to be structured with photolithography to prepare chemical structuring. Everything has to be done in yellow light, as the chips undergo light-sensitive processes, similar to a classic photo lab. The first step, a thin photoresist layer, is applied to the wafer. A drop of light-sensitive coating is spread over its surface and then heat cured. The light-sensitive coating is only a few micrometers thick, a fraction of the diameter of a human hair. The coated layer is now illuminated via a photo mask. The illuminated parts of the coating are photochemically modified in the process. The photo-exposed structure is then chemically developed. The exposed parts of the photoresist are removed by the solvent. The unexposed photoresist remains in place. In this way, tiny structures are created on the wafer, measuring only a few micrometers, or thousandths of a millimeter. Parts of the metal layer are now exposed and can be etched away. Finally, the remaining photoresist is removed. The structures which are created in this way have to be lifted from the substrate. In order to do so, a second carrier wafer is attached to the LED wafer. Heat is applied and a eutectic bond is formed. The result of every process step is checked carefully on every wafer. Now the original carrier substrate can be taken off. This occurs in the laser liftoff unit. A 
a high-energy laser beam penetrates the wafer to the gallium nitride layer and decomposes it. The original carrier can then be removed. The structures now adhere to the new carrier wafer. The PN junction, the part responsible for emitting light, now sits just under the surface. Most light generated within the crystal would not be emitted from the diode but be reflected by the surface exposed to the air. To more efficiently utilize the light produced in the diode, the chip surface is roughened. This reduces the reflected light in such a way that the light is efficiently outcoupled. The surface is roughened by wet chemical etching. A passivation layer is then deposited. It protects the surface from environmental impurities. This is followed by further metallization and structuring with coating, exposure, development and etching. Now several tens of thousands of tiny chips are on a wafer, although they are still connected with the carrier wafer. A foil is attached and the chips are separated by a laser beam. At Osram Opto Semiconductors, the electrical and optical properties of every single chip are tested in a 100% quality control. Faulty chips are identified and marked so that they can be removed later on. There is no semiconductor material that naturally emits white light. White light emitting LEDs can only be produced by means of a trick. Here, a converter layer is connected to a blue LED. Some of the blue photons pass through this layer unhindered, while others are converted into lower energy yellow photons. The LEDs therefore emit blue and yellow photons simultaneously. The eye perceives this as white light. The carrier foils with the chips are securely packed for air transportation because the chips are assembled in the LED packages at Osram Opto Semiconductors in Malaysia. This assembly requires electrical contacts via the base of the chip and a fine wire to the contact surface on the top. Now the LED is ready and can be used in all kinds of applications. The output power of the first LEDs was so low that they were usually only suitable as indicator lights. Today, energy-saving, high-performance LEDs are found virtually everywhere – in room lighting, cars, street lighting or as backlighting in TV sets. This makes light-emitting diodes a sustainable light source with great potential for the future.